Hey everyone, it's me RGB guy back with another video and in today's video we are going to talk about the algorithm that changed computer graphics drawing forever, the depth buffer algorithm. So before we understand what Z buffer algorithm is, let's take a look at how things were rendered before the Z buffer algorithm came into existence. So every object that you know inside your game is rendered as a collection of triangles. So even the most complex model that you see on your screen is made up of triangles. Now to render our game screen, all we need to do is render all the triangles that are visible. Before Z buffer came into existence, most of the rendering was done using an algorithm called painter's algorithm. Let's say I'm a painter and I'm drawing something on my canvas. How would I draw it? Let's say I'm drawing a mountain scene. So I would draw mountains and then I would draw the river and then I would draw some trees. Sorry for the bad drawing and then I would draw the houses. This is how a painter usually draws. I mean, not exactly this way, but the order of drawing is this way. So what painter's algorithm does is, it draws the farthest thing first. So it draws the mountains first, then it draws the river, then it draws the trees, and then we draw the house. Now it does this on a per polygon basis. What I mean by that is, so your mountain is made up of lot of triangles then your river is also made up of multiple triangles because it's again a 3d model let's assume there are triangles your house is also made up of different triangles and then your trees are also made up of different triangles right so everything inside your scene is made up of triangles so there is a prerequisite for painter's algorithm so in order to render using the painter's algorithm we need to sort the polygons so we would have a sorted list of polygons this sorting would be done by how far the polygon is so polygons of the mountain would be at index 0 the polygon of the river would be at index 1 let's assume that the polygons are not intersecting so at index 0 you would have all the polygons of the mountains at index 1 you would have river and so on so now you have the sorted list of the polygons all you need to do is just draw them so we would draw the mountain first because we have the list of polygons that we need to draw then we would draw the river then the trees then the houses this is the painter's algorithm one point to note is that we didn't require any kind of depth buffer for painter's algorithm we just sorted all the polygons then we started rendering with the farthest polygon and then we rendered all the polygons in order but now there are a few problems with this approach let me explain with an example let's say you have one polygon which is this and you have second polygon which is this which is basically behind it and you have a third polygon which is on top of this but behind this so the polygons are basically overlapping like this so when there are overlapping polygons, it becomes very difficult to identify which polygon is actually on top of the other. If you say this is the bottom most, then it shouldn't be on top of this. If you say this is the top most, then it shouldn't be on the bottom of this. So this is the problem with just sorting the polygons and rendering them. Right now we are just sorting by polygons, but we need something that is on a per pixel level. And to solve this particular problem, depth buffer was invented. Let's understand how Z buffer solves the problem. So let's draw two intersecting triangles. So half part of this blue triangle is behind the orange triangle and the other half is in the front of it. So this becomes an ideal candidate for a depth buffer. How does the depth buffer solve this problem? A depth buffer is nothing but an image where the value of each pixel corresponds to the Z value. The Z value is basically distance from the camera. So for example, if you have a camera, you have a cube and you have a sphere. So if you look at this image from a front view, since this cuboid is away from the camera, the depth value will be higher. So if I try to draw the depth buffer, it would be something like this. Here is a depth buffer example from a real game. Okay, so you understood what depth buffer is. Now let's understand how depth buffer solves this intersection problem. Let's say now we want to draw this particular setup where there are two intersecting triangles. So we have a color buffer, which is basically RGB values or RGB A values. And this is a depth buffer, which has depth values. 
सो वेन वी आर ड्रॉइंग यूजिंग द जी बफर अलगोरिदम एवरी टाइम वी वॉन्ट टू ड्रॉ पिक्सल वी विल चेक इट्स डेप्थ वैल्यू राइट नाउ सिंस आर कलर बफर एज वेल एज आर डेप बफर आर बोथ ब्लैंक बिकॉज वी हैवन ड्रॉन एनी थिंग द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी आर गोइंग टू ड्रॉ विल बी रिटर्न ऑन बोथ सो लेट से फर्स्ट वी आर ड्रॉइंग दिस ट्राइंगल सिंस देयर इज नो डेप्थ वैल्यू राइट नाउ दिस ट्राइंगल वुड बी डायरेक्टली ड्रॉन एंड ऑल द डेप्थ वैल्यूज वुड बी रिटर्न सो द डेप्थ वैल्यूज वुड बी डार्कर हेयर and the depth values will be slightly lighter here so there would be a gradient because it's a tilted triangle which is intersecting so we drew this first triangle we wrote its value to the color buffer we also wrote its value to the depth buffer now it is time to draw the second triangle so when we are drawing the second triangle the pixel values that do not exist on the depth buffer would be directly drawn so as these pixels are drawn the depth values will also be written now it is time to draw the pixels that are intersecting so when we start drawing in this area since the depth value of the triangle which is in the front is actually closer we will draw that part of the triangle so all these values non intersecting will be drawn properly for the intersecting value we will check the depth buffer so we had a depth buffer with the values of this triangle written the depth value of this part of this triangle is closer hence we would draw this part of the triangle but the depth value of this part of this triangle is behind right this part is behind we would not draw this part right and then we would end up drawing this so to understand in very simple terms we just use the depth values to check which triangle is in the front whichever triangle whichever part of the pixel is in the front we draw that whichever part is behind we discard that that is what depth buffer algorithm is here is a simple diagram that explains how the z buffer algorithm works so we have a triangle and we have a pentagon now out of the triangle and pentagon the pentagon is in the front of the triangle so we check the depth values on a per pixel basis whatever depth is lesser we draw that pixel if you draw a straight line from your pixel and it intersects two polygons the color of that pixel will be the closer polygon uh, let's just quickly talk about the pros and cons of both the algorithms so painter's algorithm needs sorting per pixel which makes it slower everything is drawn on top of each other we are drawing everything right from the back till the front so this is again slower there is a lot of waste of compute as well because we are drawing everything and again not everything will be visible on the final screen and then it cannot fix the intersecting triangles which we already saw it has some pros these pros are not applicable these days these were mostly for the old generation of uh, socs or devices so it's a simple way to render polygons and it doesn't require any extra memory since the devices in the early age had very limited memory this algorithm was actually useful those days the pros and cons of z buffer algorithm it requires extra memory which is not so much of a con because these days we have ample amount of memory even on our mobile gpus the pros is that it handles the intersecting triangles correctly and it also avoids redundant drawing The first use case of the depth buffer was to solve the hidden surface problem. Basically identifying which surface is in the front and which is in the back and coloring the pixel accordingly. But now since you know how far each pixel is from the camera, you can use this information for multiple other use cases. These days we are using depth buffer for anti-aliasing, for depth of field, for creating fog, and these are just few use cases. There are numerous shader effects that you implement once you have the depth information of the scene. If you like this video and learn something new please hit the subscribe button. If you have any feedback suggestion or request regarding the videos that I am making please post them in the comments. Till then have a great day take care bye bye.